Sue, where's Sue? Hey, good morning, everyone. It's good to see y'all uh, and, and good to be together this morning. Um, we, uh, we had major technical difficulties. So it's good to see everybody here. Um, we all come back to worship. If it's your first time back in the sanctuary since um, March of last year, we're so glad that you're here. Welcome to worship. Um, for anyone online or in the room that um, doesn't yet know us, my name is Tony Ruth. This is my husband, Wes. We're the pastors here. And it is just a joy to be together. Um, I, we are, had gotten kind of used to this building being very quiet on a Sunday morning. And it's much better full of noise than it is super quiet. 
I just got to tell you, it's so much better full of noise than it is super quiet. And it's been great to see everyone. So welcome um, back to work, worship this morning. Um, we hope that, uh, that you have had a great uh, beginning part to your Memorial Day weekend. I hope everybody's going to have the um, opportunity to be with some people that you love this weekend. Um, we are starting a new sermon series um, in the month of, starting now and into the month of June called I've Been Meaning to Ask, and we are really excited about that. That is why there are question marks behind me. I had some people asking, are we preaching on the Riddler? No. <laughs> we are asking questions. So, um, so I hope that we will be open to asking some questions and exploring some things of life together. So I'm going to invite you to take a deep breath into this space and to breathe it out. Whatever you brought with you this morning that you need to lay at Jesus' feet, just breathe in the goodness of God and breathe out, laying whatever it is at his feet. Friends, we do believe that we are created um, from the dust of the earth. And we do believe that goodness can come from dirt. That faith can come from doubt. That minds can be changed. That lives can be changed. That justice can begin with us. That something good can come out of Nazareth. We believe all these things because we believe that God is more expansive than we humans have words for. Showing up in corners of our world so often ignored and denied. And we believe that this place, this space, this time is a place of holy surprise where God invites us forward. Beckoning hope and bravery and curiosity from each of us as Jesus invites us to come and see. We believe. Lord, help our unbelief. Amen. Let's stand and sing together, I Come With Joy. seated and Wes did you hear it like did you hear singing like lots of it volume it was so great <laughs> so great to not just hear your own voice or just the price so great all right you're saying you don't like our singing I do like your singing <laughs> but I think we all like it better when we're all singing so Amen. friends if we were to call prayer of confession by another name I think we might call it truth telling we might call it truth telling a moment to pause and to reflect and to be honest, all of us honest about the places that we need and want to grow and the places that we need and want God's help in order for that to happen in our lives. There is power in honesty. So I invite you to pray with me and remember that we worship a loving and a gracious God. Let us pray together. Um, you will be a back and forth in this prayer of confession. 
When people heard that Jesus was from Nazareth, they asked, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? We, we confess, God of beginnings, that we have asked the same question. Can anything good come out of that side of town? From a school with poor test scores? From a criminal history? From the opposite political party? From a history of addiction? From a faith with doubt? From a church with faults? Holy, Holy God, God, forgive us for doubting that you are in all things at all times. Open our eyes to see your goodness, not as something that resides here or there, but as the expansive grace that it is. Can anything good come from there? Yes, yes. always yes. yes. Amen. Family of faith, if you ever ask yourself, can anything good come from this messy human life of mine? Remember this, God is always whispering, yes. You were created in God's image. Your origin story is one of goodness and love from the very beginning. So hear and believe the good news of the gospel. God is here. God is at work among us. We are forgiven. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen.
see so many smiling faces back at you this morning. So, Gwen, thank you, Inquire. That was beautiful. Would you please join me in the prayer for illumination? Holy God, I don't always know how to pray, but you find me anyway. I don't always know how to listen, but you are in my ears all the same. I don't know all how to believe, but you surround me with beauty, and I find myself held together in love. Where I come from, there are so many distractions. Where I come from, there is so much noise. Find me, hold me, be in these words. Help me hear. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 35 through 42. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which translated is Peter. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Now, if you want to remain standing as we sing our middle hymn, I'm going to invite all the children that are three years old through the first grade to go with Miss Angela to children's worship. <laughs> chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. 
He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. <laughs> oh. oh, no. <laughs> Go to the hard copy. <laughs> Where was that? Nathaniel asked him. <laughs> Sticking with this. <laughs> Nathaniel asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathaniel replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. Everybody take a deep breath. Let us be seated. I will be completely honest with you. The decision to shut things down last year, last March, was really easy. Uh, the bishop sent out his recommendations. And it was pretty simple to just pull the plug and say, we're not meeting. We're not meeting in person. We have the capability to live stream things. We're going to do that. Um, and then uh, that was easy. We had some conversations with leadership and made some plans. Coming back to worship, starting things back up, up again, has been much more difficult. We've had a couple of false starts. And now it feels like things are slowly beginning to open up. It's required more conversations, more questions, uh, more difficulty. So Tony Ruth and Pastor Richard and Shirley and I have been talking and we were discussing what, what do people need? What does our church need? What do, uh, what do we need to focus on? And so we were led to this uh, sermon series that we think gets at some of what we need. We don't really need like intense Bible studies or things that are overly academic or complicated. What we, what we really need is to reconnect with one another and perhaps make new connections. We need fellowship. We need relationship. And there, today in our world, there are so many challenges to building authentic relationships. And as the world continues to open up again, followers of Jesus, the church, we have an amazing opportunity to model for the world what relationships built on grace and kindness and the love of Jesus look like in action. We have an opportunity to be a community of people from different backgrounds, different points of view, different experiences, to come together for common purpose and to love one another. Those kinds of relationships, those kind of connections begin with courageous conversations, asking one another questions that go beyond the small talk stuff. Conversations that go beyond the surface. Now it takes courage to ask someone questions that go beyond the surface. And it certainly takes courage to answer those kind of questions when asked. So for the next few weeks, we're going to each week look at a different question that maybe we've been meaning to ask. I've been meaning <clears throat> to ask. And this week, I've been meaning to ask, where are you from? Let us pray. 
God, we thank you for the gift of connection. First of all, for the way we are connected to you through your Holy Spirit, your love for us, your presence with us. We thank you for the opportunities to connect and now reconnect with one another. God, we pray that you would be at work in the midst of all that, that we would remember as the body of Christ, it is your Holy Spirit that binds us together. And now, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So this morning we're starting with what appears to be a simple question, but when we dig a little bit, we find out it's actually loaded for many of us. I've been meaning to ask, where are you from? Now, if we're honest about it, some of us don't really want to be where we're from, right? Some of us don't really like where we're from. And it might not be a a town or a community. Maybe you don't like the family you're from. Maybe there's some shame there or some pain there. Maybe you don't like the culture you're from. Maybe there are things about your background. Maybe you don't like the experiences or mistakes you come from. Maybe that's uh, troubling for you. Maybe you don't want to answer that question. You might fear other people's assumptions and judgments. And if we're honest, some of us do make assumptions and judge people because of where they're from. As many of you know, I grew up fairly close to here in Rowan County. And uh, one thing we really didn't like in Rowan County was Yankees. Hold on. Do you know how many Yankees I knew growing up? But we didn't like them. The Bible study group that met recently to study judges, I believe there were eight of us. And three of us were, including myself, three of us were native Southerners. The rest were Yankees. And I was having this conversation with them, and what I realized is uh, in a church now where I think the majority of us are Yankees, or at least not native Southerners, I think I like Yankees better. (laughs) I told you to just wait. I think I like Yankees a little bit more because um, there's no guessing right? I mean, if, if they have an opinion, you know it. With Southerners, we're a little bit, you know, a Southerner can go, well, and that tells you a lot. You have to guess at that. You have to work more to figure out what a Southerner is saying. And I know you native Southerners are thinking, bless his heart. <laughs> and I know what that means. We judge where people are from, their accent, their skin color, their clothes, tattoos, piercings, haircut, whatever. So I can say some words, I can can say some things, and you're going to make a snap judgment about where that person is from. We've already covered this, Yankee, Southerner. But what if I said Mexican? or West Virginia, or California, or Mississippi, England, or Iraq. We make judgments based on these things about where people are from. And then a lot of times we just leave it there, you know? We act as if we don't need to know more than the fact that that person is from, you know, Mississippi or California or Mexico or wherever. An important part of cultivating authentic relationships built on trust is recognizing and confessing our assumptions and then being willing to let them go so we can learn one another's stories no matter where we're from. 
I was licensed as a local pastor in June of 2003, which was one of the first steps in a really long ordination process. And part of, of that licensing as a local pastor is uh, you had to fill out this biographical information sheet. And uh, on that sheet, there was a line that simply said, city of birth. It didn't say hometown, it said city of birth. And so I had to write down DeBilt, Netherlands, because that's where I was born, because my dad was in the Air Force and stationed in the Netherlands. Both of my parents are from the North Carolina Piedmont, and we moved back when I, uh, to North Carolina when I was seven months old. But I'm standing on the stage with a group of people, and uh, the conference secretary at the time, Reverend Denny White, said, uh, says, we have a truly international group here today. We have somebody that's from Africa, and uh, somebody from South Korea, and we even have somebody from the Netherlands. And in my head, I'm like, I'm from Enochville. I don't count. I don't speak Dutch, I don't have dual citizenship. When people ask me where I've, I'm from, I've never, not once ever, have I said the Netherlands. I say Enochville. In fact, the only thing that I really have that shows I'm from the Netherlands, a couple of photos and this like, souvenir wooden shoe that I drew on with crayon when I was four. But an important part of my story is that I was born in the Netherlands, three months premature. At the time, Dutch hospitals were among the best in the world when it came to caring for premature infants. And the hospital in which I was born, and this is fun, I looked this up, um, it's fun to say, Wilhelmina Kinder Ziekenhuis <laughs> was one of the best children's hospitals in the country. And so it is important where I was born. As a Methodist, I like to think that's an example of God's prevenient grace going before me. So yeah, where we're from shapes who we are. And as I said, it's more than geography. Where we're from is also about who we're from. Who are our people? Who are your people? The communities that shaped you the schools, the teachers you had, your neighbors, your community, local customs, local culture, the rhythms of life in your family. That's a constant source of conversation in my own family. Um, <clears throat> you see, growing up, my, uh, my dad got home from work at 3.30, my mom got home from 5.30. That only means something because my dad is the one that cooked supper. Now, my, my dad could cook like four things. And so every, night, every week, we had the same thing on Monday nights. We had the same thing, thing on Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, and Thursday nights. Every week, the menu was the same. And so Tony Ruth will occasionally say, you know, we should try something new for supper. And always I go, why? <laughs> we figured out what we like. Not in Tony Ruth Smith's house. She has to leave almost to another state before I can make hamburger help. That's part of what shaped me, that predictability. Knowing what to expect. Here's the thing, when we ask each other that question, we all have things that shaped us. Stories that we tell. Nathaniel hears where Jesus is from. Based on uh, Nathaniel's assumptions about the local culture of Jesus' hometown, he sarcastically asks a mocking question. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nazareth was a backwater where nothing important or interesting happened. It might have been, not have been called that, but a lot of us grew up in Nazareth, right? Can anything good come out of Enochville? Don't be too hard on Enochville. And we now have, we have, we have a stoplight and two Dollar General stores. 
We're coming up. Nazareth was a backwater. It's in the middle of nowhere. Some of us, like I said, are from places like that. And maybe, maybe, in all seriousness, we feel a little of the sting. Because that question, there's a judgment there. There's a harsh judgment. There's a feeling of superiority. We don't like to be judged. We can't, you can't control where you're from. But Jesus' response to Nathaniel's skeptical assumptions, it's an example for us. Jesus didn't get offended. He knew what Nathaniel was thinking. He knew the skepticism. He didn't get offended. He didn't feel the need to defend his hometown or to put Nathaniel down. Instead, there's that invitation spoken by Jesus to some of his first disciples, and then echoed by Philip to Nathanael. There's that invitation. Can anything good come from there? Come and see. Come and see. Now that word to see also means to know or to understand or to perceive. Come and understand. Come and perceive. The invitation to come and see is, is an invitation to dig a little bit, to connect at a deeper level, to move beyond our assumptions, to a deeper level of curiosity that pushes past those assumptions and requires time and attentiveness. Asking with genu genuine interest, where are you from? It's a reflection of that deeper curiosity. But in order to ask and answer those questions with one another, in order to understand and perceive one another, to connect at that deeper level, we're going to have to invest. We've got to make an investment. The first thing we have to invest is our time. We have to, to take time to connect with one another, to reconnect with one another. Now, I know that you're, some of you are thinking, actually, I had them do a show of hands at 9 o'clock and fair is fair. Can't play favorites. Raise your hand if, if somebody says that's going to take more time and the first thing you think is I don't have time. Who thinks that? I don't have the time. At, like everybody at 9 o'clock, raise their hands. Y'all are so much more relaxed. I don't have time for that. I don't have the time to do that. Well, one of the things, uh, the truth of this, it's the kind of thing my dad would have told me when I was a teenager and I'd have rolled my eyes. You have time for what you make time for. You have time for what you make time for. What's important to you? What are your priorities? We have to choose to invest in one another, in connections, in relationship, going past the small talk stuff. You know what it is. We've done this before, but I like it. If, I, if we meet each other in the hallway at church and we're kind of in a hurry, and I say, how you doing? You're going to say, fine. You're going to say, fine. And uh, I might know that you're not doing fine. You might be crying, and you're going to say, I'm fine. Are we going to take the time to push past that? No, come on, I know you're not fine. What's going on? And it doesn't have to be a crisis. It doesn't have to be a problem. It's sitting down and saying, tell me about yourself. Where are you from? Investing the time in one another. Cultivating relationships is slow but rewarding work. It's not just time. We also have to invest attention. That's, that's pretty challenging for us too. There are so many things that compete for our attention all the time. I mean, seriously, I can't really fuss at anybody. I'm the chief of sinners. How much time do we spend on these? 
Just a minute, hold on, I've got to answer this text. We choose where to spend our time, where to give our attention. And in choosing one another, we invest. Finally, we have to be willing to learn. You've got to be willing to learn, to learn something. This might sound simple, but the truth is, learning requires humility. Because to learn something is to acknowledge that there's something you don't know. And I realize there are some of you, there are some of you out out there that know everything. (laughs) You know who you are, (laughs) but you know everything. And so this can be a challenge sometimes because to learn something means you don't know everything there is to know. Nathaniel thought he knew everything about Nazareth, but he didn't know Jesus. And he learned. Nathaniel got there. So we invest the time and we invest the attention and we acknowledge with humility that my assumptions are just that, they're assumptions. And I can learn something that challenges those assumptions. And it means there are things like those assumptions we have to unlearn. Unlearn the easy assumptions we make about people based on where they're from, based on their accent, based on what they look like. You might be surprised that just because somebody talks slow doesn't really mean they're slow, right? We have to learn We have to be humble enough to learn. Now, we're not just doing this, these questions I've been meaning to ask this series. We're not just doing this to deepen our friendships or expand our network of connections. You don't need the church for that. You can do that on your own or in any group or club or whatever. We're doing this because all of our stories, all the things we learn about each other, have the potential to point to Jesus. Jesus is at the root of it all. Reverend Lauren Wright Pittman puts it this way. In John 1, each disciple has a glimpse of who Jesus is. Together, they form a patchwork understanding. That's beautiful, like a quilt. A patchwork understanding. We need one another to discover the fullness of who Jesus is. No matter where we're from, what our background is, what's in our past, what we've done, what we've said, no matter, we all bring something of God to the table. But that requires relationships that go beyond the surface. That means that we need to invest time in one another, to be present with one another, to be patient with one another, to listen to our, one another's stories so that we share Jesus with each other And we offer the love of Christ to our neighbors. Pushing beyond judgment and assumptions to the depth of real relationship. And we find as we do that, God is already there. His grace is already ahead of us, waiting for us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of north and south, east and west, we've been meaning to say thank you. Thank you for scooping up the dirt and breathing life into it. Thank you for forming these bodies, this life, this world, these people. Thank you for drawing us in, for holding us up, for weaving us together, even when it's hard, especially when it's hard. If people ask, where are you from? Our mouth speaks of geography, but our souls always sing your name. So today we come to you in prayer with gratitude overflowing, gratitude for the places we've been, for the people who have shaped us, for the spaces we call home. 
but we also come to you with prayers on our hearts for the places where people are hungry. Hungry not just for food, but for connection and for dignity. For someone to call them by their name and to be curious enough to ask questions to get to know them, to understand. We pray, God, for hospitals that are full and for loneliness that feels like a second pandemic that people are still just now beginning to lift out of. We pray for parents and teachers who are exhausted after a really long and hard year. We pray for grief that hovers far too close and far too heavy. This Memorial Day weekend, we pray for families that grieve someone lost at war. And for some, Lord, that loss might have been 60 years ago, and some it was just two years ago. But the grief still feels as intense and the same. And so we pray your peace. And we pray for those whose lives are connected with ours that have asked us to pray for them. We ask you, Lord, to scoop us up like you scooped up dirt on that first day and hold our hearts alongside our worries and relieve us of this burden. Protect us in the palm of your hand. Draw us closer to one another as you do. God of creation, you have always been our first home. We come from you. So here are our prayers for the spaces that we call home today. We are inviting you in. Come and see what we have made of our lives and come and see where we still are longing for redemption. And now with the confidence of the children who believe without hesitation, we pray the prayer you taught us saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, forgive us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning at 9 o'clock, I said this, and I'm going to say it again because I think they deserve it. This morning, um, three people in the back corner gave the offering of their time and their talent for the sake of allowing the gospel of Jesus Christ to be proclaimed, and they did it on computers. And so I remind you that the offerings that we bring are not just the things we put in the offering plate. It is our time and our expertise and our willingness to problem solve and troubleshoot. And so we thank the gentlemen in the back for their offering this morning, even as we thank you all for your offering of your time and your attention and what you put in the plate Friends who are online, we thank you for what you give of your time and your talent. We remind you that you can give your offering online, or if you're here and you'd like to lay it in the offering plate on your way out, um, you are welcome to do that. We thank God for all of God's provision for us as we pray together. God bless the gifts that um, we bring today. And use them, Lord. Every one of them, the things that we think are something huge and the things that we feel like are just a little something. We believe, God, that you can take little somethings and make amazing somethings that we would not have ever imagined. And so we ask, Lord, that you would bless the giver and the gift to the glory of your name and to the furthering of your good news to all people. It's in the name of Christ that we ask it. Amen. our final hymn, but I do want to mention to you a couple of things. If you're looking for places to get reconnected and to be asking these questions, where are you from? And um, we're going to be talking about more questions as we go. 
Um, I'm going to invite you to come a little bit early next week and hang out in our Narthex area, our new gather not in the Narthex, in the new gathering area. There's coffee and water out there and comfortable places to sit and good conversation to be had. So I hope you'll come either stay late from 9 or come early to 11 and have some time of conversation together. Next week we're celebrating our graduates at both services um, and we are so excited to do that. And then next week um, on Sunday the 6th, between 6 and 8, we're going to be out in the Grove having um, something we're calling picnic, pel picnics, pelicans, and play. So bring a picnic, bring your dinner with you. Um, pelicans uh, snow cone truck will be out here. You can buy a snow cone. And then we're just going to have games to play out here. So we have a couple of giant Jingas. If you have cornhole boards, bring your cornhole boards. If you have ladder ball, I, we don't have one, but we'd love to bring someone, someone bring that. And we're just going to play and reconnect with one another. Um, and maybe we'll have some of these conversations and discover something about someone that we didn't know before um, and find ourselves um, deepening in our curiosity and our walk with Christ. So I hope you'll take part in that. Our closing hymn is number 548, In Christ There Is No East or West. Let's sing together. what a joy to be gathered in worship today and as you leave this place may God grant you the curiosity to counter assumptions the vulnerability to befriend the courage to speak truthfully the wisdom to listen the strength to ask for help the resiliency to choose love even when it's hard and the awareness of the Holy Spirit always beside you in the name of the Father Son and Holy Spirit Go in peace. Amen. Amen.